let's look at the valuation of a currency swap, and we can follow the same procedures we did for the interest rate swap. We can value the swap in terms of bond prices uh, or in terms of forward rate agreements. So let's start with the uh, bond prices. And we can write out our formula here. The value of the swap is the value of the domestic bond minus the value of the foreign bond multiplied by the spot exchange rate. So B sub D is the domestic currency bond. B sub F is the foreign currency bond. And S naught is the spot exchange rate. So when we read this first one, we don't have to think very much. Where's the minus sign? The minus sign is, is, is in front of the foreign bond. So clearly we're long domestic, we're short foreign. On this one, uh, um, to value this one, the minus sign is, front of, is, is in front of the domestic bond. So that means we're long foreign, we're short domestic. And we'll set up our scenario uh, here. Uh, we have a financial institution uh, that is going to uh, receive 5% uh, on yen. Uh, per year and is going to pay out 8% on US dollars on a notional amount of 10 million. The notional amount of, of yen is uh, 1,200 million or 1.2 trillion. And the spot rate S naught is US dot JPY equals 110. And of course we read that as one US dollar buys 110 yen. So the yen is just a little under a penny. Each yen will be just a little under a penny. Also to finish setting this up, we're dealing with two currencies. We're dealing with two currencies and, and remember what LIBOR was now. LIBOR is quoted for five different currencies, seven different time, uh, time periods in five different currencies. We need LIBOR for each currency. So we're told that there is a term structure of interest rates for LIBOR that is flat in the US, which means 9% on all maturities. And in Japan it is 4%. This is all the information we need to value this now, and we're going to value it in terms of bonds, so we need some cash flows. And we're told there are three years left, there's three years left on this on this currency swap. So we want the cash flows for year one, two, three, and I put the second three here to show the return of principal as a separate amount. So we just have to fill in uh, fill in our chart now. So U.S. dollar cash flows. What is our U.S. dollar cash flows? Well, if we're pricing it as a bond, it pays 8% on 10 million. So the cash flows will be 0 0.8 million, 0.8 million, 0.8 million, and the return of the principal, which is 10 million. We could have just combined the 10.8 in the last one, but we're going to do it separately. Now we need to discount each of these back by its appropriate discount rate, which is LIBOR in the US. We can see here that it's 9%, and remember E to the negative RT. So it's E to the negative 0.09 times 1, times 2, times 3. And if you do that for all your discount rates, you'll get 0 0.9139, 0 0.83527 and 0.76337, which would be the same for here. I'm not going to write it out, but it would be the same thing. Multiply the two together, uh, you get your present value. Equals 0.7311, equals 0.6682, multiply, multiply, equals 0.6107, and of course times that will equal 7.6. 337, add them all up together, 9.6439 million US. So there we go, there's the present value of that particular bond. Let's look at the cash flows in uh, yen. It is 5% on 1200 million or 1 1.2 trillion, gives us 60 million yen, 60 million yen, 60 million yen, and the return of that. Uh, because we're pricing it out as if it were just a bond, right? Now we need the discount rate for each of these. We're going to use this LIBOR rate that, that is prevailing in the Japanese market, e to the negative RT, which would be e to the negative 0 .04, uh, 0 0.04 times 1, times 2, times 3, and we'll get our discount factor here, 0.9607. 0 0.92311, 0 0.88692, and it's the same for the last one. Multiply them out, 
and figure that out. Our present value will be 57, 65, 55, 39, 1064, 30. And our principal, 106, oops, sorry. Let me just erase that. I jumped ahead by one. This is 53, 22, and 1064, 30. Add that up, we have 1, 2, 3, 0, 0.55 million. Well, we have a bit of an issue, right? This is the present value. This is as of today. We have 9.6439 million US. The other bond is uh, 1 trillion 230 million yen. So we need to convert that. So let's finish up. The value of the swap is, and which one are we, uh, which one are we long? We're receiving yen, so we're long yen. So we're using this one right here. So the value of the swap is S naught. What is S naught? Well, now it's not in the, in, in the position we want. We want to convert yen into US dollars. This is US dollars into yen, which means we need the JPY.USD rate. Well, that's easy to get. The JPY.US rate is easy to get. It's just 1 divided by 1, 1, 10. And we'll get 0 0.009091. You got to be careful on this spot rate. That's why it's important to be able to read the spot rate and ask yourself, which way are we going on this? Are we converting this into, uh, into dollars? So this is what we want to do. And if we are, then we have to take the inverse of this rate, the JPY.USD. So what's our, uh, what's our spot? 0 0.009091 times... Uh, our uh, the value of the bond in the foreign currency, one two three zero point five five minus, and what's the value of the U.S. nine point six four three nine million uh, will give us one point five four three zero million USD. So we can see that the value, the swap currently has value for the financial institution. It is positive 1.5430 million uh, US dollars. Now, um, you're probably wondering why. Why did I pay, why did I change the rate here? Well, the S naught belongs with the uh, foreign currency. You could have achieved the same result by moving, by taking S naught out and moving it in front of BD and specifying the value of this in terms of yen. We simply just would have multiplied 9.6439 by 110 and subtracted it from 1 million 230, uh, or sorry, 1,230,000,000 trillion 230 million yen, and we would have had the value of the swap in terms of yen. The other way to do it is once we have this rate, you can multiply that by 110. If we did it that way, if we just multiplied the domestic currency and valued the swap in terms of yen, uh, we'd have the value in terms of yen as opposed to the value in terms of US dollars. So the question you have to ask yourself when you're figuring out this is, do I want to express the value of the swap in terms of dollars or in terms of yen? Well, it depends on what your domestic currency is. Typically, you'd want to express it in terms of the domestic currency. Since this is the US, the domestic currency is the US dollars. However, if this were a class in uh, uh, the UK, then our domestic currency would not be the US dollar, would be the British pound. So there we go. So let's value this now in terms of forward rate agreements. Let's uh, set up our scenario. We have the same scenario. We are long uh, the foreign currency. We're short the domestic currency or short the domestic bond. Uh, the notional value is 1 trillion 200 million yen or 10 million US dollars. We still have the exchange, uh, the, the same exchange rate that we saw before, USD.JPY equals 1110. We read that as 1 US dollar buys 110 Japanese yen. Uh, the other way of writing that, as we saw, was JPY.USD equals 0 0.009091, meaning 1 Japanese yen barely buys 1 penny 
one penny US, which makes sense because one US dollar buys 100 US pennies, but buys 110 yen. So each yen is slightly worth, uh, slightly, it's worth slightly less than, than, the, than the penny. So if we're going to value these as forward rate agreements, uh, what we need is just the net difference between them discounted by the proper forward rate. So let's have a look at what we have. Let's, let's list what we know. We need our US dollar cash flows. Do we know what they are? Well, there we are short the, the, this, uh, this particular uh, currency by 8% on 10 million. So our cash flow is going to be negative 0 0.8, negative 0 0.8, negative 0 0.8, and then finally negative 10. What about our Japanese, our yen cash flow? It's coming in. So we're going to be long 60, 60, 60, and finally 1 million, 1 trillion, 200 million yen. Well, we want to now convert all of these yens into US dollars. We want to convert them into US dollars, and you have to do that. You have to convert it into US dollars, each one. Because remember now, each one is a single forward rate agreement. On the previous screen, we calculated them as bonds, so we could figure out what the pre net pre what the present value of the full bond was using the appropriate discount rate in each country's currency, and then just apply the the uh, the, the spot rate to it. But in this one here, instead of going down the columns, we're going across the rows. Each one is a forward rate, right? So how do we find the forward rate on the currency to convert it into appropriate U.S. dollars? You'll recall we've already done that in Chapter 4. We looked at the forward rate of a currency is the spot rate, and then it's e to the power r, the interest rate uh, that you're receiving, uh, minus rf, the foreign interest rate that you're receiving, to the power of t. And that's it. And we know that we were told that our term structure of LIBOR is flat in the U.S. at 9%. This is R. And it's flat in Japan at 4%. And since the domestic currency is uh, US, this must be the foreign return. So that, to get our forward rate in this particular case, would equal, what's our spot? 0 0.009091 e to the power of 0 0.09 minus 0 0.04 times 1. Second year times 2. Third year times three. The S naught stays the same. E to the R to the, to the R minus RF stays the same. It's just T. We need a forward rate after year one, after year two, after year three, because this is the cash we'll receive at the end of year one. So once we solve for this formula with the power of one, two, and three, we'll get forward rates of 0 0.009557. 0 0.010047 and 0 0.010562. What do these forward rates mean? How do we read them? Well, we just take the forward rate and substitute it into the uh, all of these here are expressed in the term jpy.usd. So uh, let's just take the third one. Uh, what it's saying there is that one yen. Uh, at the forward rate, it means that one yen will buy 0 0.01562 US dollars, so just slightly over a penny each uh, on uh, on the third year. Well, we just multiply them out now to get we need because we need the net between the US cash flow. So we've got our jap our yen, we've got our forward rates. Now we're going to convert them into US equivalents, and we just multiply. We just multiply each one and we get an equals. So this will be 0.5734 million. This will come to 0.6028 million. This will come to 0.6337 and the final total will come to 12.6746. So there's our US equivalents on and this is our US out cash outflows, our US cash inflows. We're using these forward rates. Now you can see how the financial institution could hedge out all currency risk by taking, by hedging out the difference, um, or hedging out uh, its its foreign currency exposure using forward rates. Well, what's the net? The net now is simply 
this total minus this total. So this will give us negative 0.2266, negative 0.1972, negative 0.1663, and a positive 2.6746. Great, that's the difference at the end of year one, that's the difference at the end of year two, the end of year three, and uh, of the principal payment at the end of year three. So we need to bring this back to the present. We need a present value. To do that, we need a discount factor. Well, we've already solved the discount factors, haven't we? What currency are we currently in? We are currently in US dollars. So what discount factor are we gonna use? The discount factor associated with this LIBOR rate. So we've already calculated that before. Our first discount would be 0 0.9139. This is 0.83527. And here we have 0.76337. Same down here. Well, now you just multiply and equals. So our present value is negative, because a negative times a positive is still a negative. 0.2071, this will be negative 0.1647, negative 0.1269, and finally at the very end we have a positive 2.0417. If you add these all up we get 1,540,000 US dollars. Exactly what we got when we valued them as bonds. So whichever way you feel comfortable with, here's the deal. Once you program your spreadsheet once, uh, whichever way you program it, whichever way you feel more comfortable with, once it's done once, that's it. You can, you can then find the value of uh, any currency swap by entering the appropriate variables, right? There we go.